oil change on a John Deere 455. Had a couple people request this video. Figured I finally have time to do it, so I should do it. Uh, so what you need, uh, you're gonna need a couple different things. One, you're gonna need oil, three quarts of oil. <clears throat> That's how much the engine takes. In my particular case, I actually buy five gallons because I, I use enough of it. I buy five gallons at a time of the John Deere Plus 52. Uh, diesel engine oil, which is a uh, 15W40. Um, and so uh, that's what I buy. You don't necessarily have, you can use any diesel engine oil. It's perfectly fine. This is just what I buy. Uh, you'll need a pan to drain the oil in, at least three quarts. You'll need an oil filter. Oil filter is M806418. Uh, this same oil filter, as you can see, is for the X748. Uh, fits any number of the Yanmar engines uh, for um, John Deere machines. One important thing that I would note, uh, don't necessarily assume that the Deere dealer is always going to be the most expensive. The reason I buy Deere fil fu uh, filters, um, various reasons that I buy Deere filters, uh, is the fact that typically Deere filters are the cheapest. Um, I don't know how much I, I, I buy these filters um, normally about 10 at a time, so I can't tell you exactly how much each one is, but generally if you have a deer dealer nearby, the deer oil filter is going to be cheaper than, uh, say like Advanced Auto or O'Reilly or anything. Um, I don't know why that is, just to how it is. Need paper towels, I use Brake Clean, you need a 10 millimeter wrench, and you need an oil filter wrench. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take over here on the opposite side of the tractor from the oil filter, there is underneath here, right here, uh, no, right here, is a uh, valve. If you can see, hopefully you can see that. It's not too uh, dark. Uh, that valve right there takes a 10 millimeter wrench. We're going to drain the oil into that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the camera just so you can see that. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. One of the things you're gonna to need to do before you do an oil change is make sure you know where the oil lever's at. You can see the hashtags, or the hashtag, the hashes on the end of the uh, dipstick there. Uh, and you see that it says this machine has plenty of oil in it. So you don't have to worry about it. Now we can drain the oil. All right, to drain the oil, you can see my pan right there. I'm just gonna take my ratcheting wrench here and I'm going to open up the oil drain valve. Now, that's interesting. Uh, after you get it done a couple turns, you should just be able to open it up. Uh, if you have a ratcheting wrench, be careful because uh, your wrench can definitely get stuck on there. Make sure you've run the machine for a few minutes. I don't know, why am I? Steering hoses like that. Let's fix that later. <coughs> but make sure when you do that, now that I've got the steering hose in the way, so those are just going to drip on there. That's okay. Um, So I'll show you the problem with the ratcheting wrench here. As you open it up, more will come out, but eventually you won't be able to get your wrench off because there's not enough clearance. Actually, there is. Um, maybe it's just the 4-5, uh, the 445-425 machines that are like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this drain. Uh, once it is drained, um, we'll close that back up, clean all that up with brake clean. And then we'll go to the other side and take the oil filter off. Okay, so while the oil's draining, now that we've got it got it draining, uh, we're gonna do two things to help promote uh, vent to help promote ventilation of the engine. We're going to pull up the dipstick, and at the same time, we're going to open um, if I can get this stuck up here. We're gonna move that out of the way. Uh, make sure you move this back if you do that. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and clean around the oil fill with some brake clean. 
and then we're gonna just then we're gonna open the oil fill. That should buy provide the crankcase some ventilation. Just like that there. I'll lay that down there on the foot footboard. You can also uh, come in from this oil fill, which I've cleaned off a little bit so you could see it a little bit better. Um, either one works. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you use to fill the engine. And so now uh, we're just gonna wait until the oil's drained out and then we're gonna come over here and we're going to remove the oil filter. So we'll be back in just a little bit. All right, so what I've actually done is I've gone and gotten another pan um, because the oil is still dripping over there. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the oil filter off and replace it. To do that, we're gonna take our oil filter wrench. Um, typically, if you're changing the, the oil for the first time, some oaf has gotten in here and really tightened down the oil filter. Uh, so once it's loose, you're probably gonna bend the oil filter, uh, which is perfectly fine. It's being replaced. Um, really nice thing on these uh, engines, they actually have this little chute that drains the oil, which is really nice. Allows us to uh, get it all uh, off, the, keep it off the engine mounts, etc. Once we're done with that, pull the oil filter off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let that drain for a few minutes and I'm gonna wipe it down with a clean uh, shop rag. And I'm gonna clean all that up uh, because what I've done is uh, one of the things that I like to use around the shop are these silver Sharpies. Uh, silver Sharpies you can use to label the oil filter with everything uh, that you need for um, your next round of maintenance. So I'm gonna let this drain for a little bit and then I'm gonna come in here, uh, cover, you know, cl clean all this up, clean the, the O-ring surface and whatnot, uh, then blow all this off with some brake clean, wipe it up, clean it up real good. Then I'm gonna put the, the new oil filter on there. The reason I'm cleaning up with brake clean first before I put the new oil filter on there is because I've already written all the information here and brake clean will take the Sharpie right off. So let me go do that and then I'll come back and we'll close everything up and we'll put our oil in our tractor. All right, so got everything all cleaned up around the oil filter uh, housing. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my oil filter. What I've also already done is I have put my finger underneath the oil drain. Um, notice I didn't say in the oil uh, disposal pan, but right underneath the oil drain because that is clean or dirty oil coming out that doesn't have any uh, contaminants other than what was in the engine. And so what I'm gonna do is I, or I put, if you can see the sheen on there, put it on the rubber gasket. It's incredibly important to make a nice seal. What we're gonna do, just put our filter on here like so. Spin it on. And hand tighten it. There's no reason uh, that I have found to do any more than hand tighten on these oil filters. Just, they never seem to leak. Uh, they seem to be okay. If they do leak, you can always go in and hand tighten them up. Um, I don't think I have, I'm trying to remember um, if I've ever used an oil filter wrench on this, these size machines. On the 4066 I've used, uh, I use an oil a wrench to tighten them up just because the, the filters are a little bit larger. Uh, but on these 18s filter, 18 type filters should be fine. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around the other side, oil filters on. And we're going to shut the uh, drain valve. One tip that some people have uh, told me well, before I shut the drain valve, this isn't something I do normally, but it can be really good practice. When you're changing the oil, take the key out, set it on the seat, that way you have to remember it. Um, typically, since I don't really have a lot of distractions when I'm out in the shop, not something I'm really, uh, I don't get really uh, into those types of things. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that though. Uh, numerous cases uh, around the internet of somebody uh, running their machine after they drained the oil, but then you know got distracted by something and then all of a sudden come back outside, start it up, pull it out and throws a rod. I've talked to numerous mechanics that have done that. Well, something, you know, it just quit running and they'll drain the engine oil. Engine oil is brand new and there's a bust rod, typically what happened. Nothing wrong with that. 
Well, there's tons wrong with it, but there's not anything necessarily, I mean, mistakes happen. You just try not to make them. So I'm going to close up our oil filter or oil drain right here, get all that cleaned up, and then come back and we'll add the oil. All right. So what I've done is you can see I've already, I've actually already put uh, 50 pumps uh, into the tractor from my oil bucket here. If you have quartz, great. Uh, just add three quarts and you'll check it. Um, so in my particular case, I know the X748 and the 455, I think they take the same exact amount of oil. Um, this pump I have right here should be 12 strokes per quart. Um, three quarts, 48 pumps. Uh, it's a little cold. Um, so I overshot and I went for 50. That seems to be pretty consistent. Um, so we're gonna see if it's full here. Now, what I'm gonna do is we've got the dipstick. It is clean. I just had it partially in, uh, into the engine. So now I'm going to draw it out. And it looks like I could probably add a little bit more because keep in mind, I have not started this machine yet since I have not started it. There is no oil in the oil filter. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead, pull the, um, and this is really hard for me to do on camera uh, because I'm holding this camera. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna set the camera up and I'll show everything else that I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull uh, the, the hose out of the engine that I'm putting the oil in with. I'm gonna crank it. I'm gonna let it run for a couple minutes, actually probably 30 seconds. That'll fill up the oil filter. I'm gonna come back in and check it, and then I'm gonna add a little bit more oil. The parking brake set, you should be able to start the engine from the ground. Should have cycled everything around. Um, so now we're going to check and see where we're at on the dipstick. Just clean it off. And we're significantly lower. Uh, we're probably about uh, the equivalent, about a half inch lower on the dipstick to where we were at. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take the oil fill back off. In there so don't lose it and I think I'm going to add another like I said this is not since it, a lot of people don't have one of these it's not really that important uh, for anybody to know I'm gonna add another five or six we're gonna say six pumps and we're gonna see where we're at I'm gonna give it just a few minutes to drain down or a few seconds to drain down So it's a little bit fuller. You don't want to overfill it. I'm going to add another four. It gives me a total of 60 pumps that I've put in. And I can attribute that to probably this oil being a little cold, not moving as well as it should uh, coming out of this pump. And I'm happy with that. We're within, hopefully you can see it, we're within about a quarter inch of the top of the hash marks. Um, so what we're gonna do, oil change is done. 
Uh, add our three quarts of oil. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take this out, put it back in our container here, close our oil fill up, and then all that's left is clean up our mess. Put that back right, right there, and we're done. That's how you change the oil in a 455. Hopefully that helps. The next video will be uh, changing a uh, fuel filter. Thanks for watching.